Welcome to the Painted in Color podcast. I'm your co-host, Mia Rajo, and I'm joined today by everybody, Lauren Brown, Esther Wu, and Eric Wilkerson. And we're here to welcome you all to the first episode of 2022. Uh, we just sort of jumped into the conversation, but we're basically discussing uh, self-care, you know, just different thoughts going into the new year. And uh, I don't know, just reflections on our, our careers as we start a whole nother year of this pandemic. So <laughs> let's get started. <laughs> So we were just talking about like feeling like you're not good enough or feeling like you're not going to make it in your, in your industry of choice. And I just remember being at San Diego Comic-Con. This was 2017, 2016, 2016. And um, I had just lost my job at some game studio and it was kind of like San Diego Comic-Con was prepared in advance of me losing that job. So it was kind of like, oh crap, now I don't have any other stream of income after I've blown all this money to come out here. So I better sell a bunch of stuff and you know, hope for the best. So after a lackluster first day, kind of people coming by looking at my prints and stuff and pat me on the head saying you do some great work yes you do right <laughs> like pinch oh, no. you you touch me <laughs> right? pay my bills <laughs> right 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 i'm, so I'm like, doing this for a living <laughs> like they or they're, they're like or, or they'll walk past your table they'll nod you know like you know acknowledge you or they'll just stop cold and look at your table look at my stuff and then keep walking like they they're carrying their bag of marvel prints and stuff like they could barely hold it all together it's all and they just they're like do i give this guy my money you actually see that conversation happening and and then you realize they're not going to come anywhere near you and you go okay well we'll just keep keep, keep going right anyway so after that day i was like really upset i'm thinking this was a waste of money. This was a waste of time. I could have been trying to produce samples at home, but I spent thousands of dollars to prepare to come out here and for what, just to stand there for eight hours, 10 hours. And they say, thank you. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the, you know, but I was sitting in an Uber uh, being driven back to my Airbnb and the guy was asking me where I was coming from and how my day was. And I was telling him exactly what I just said. And turns out he was an ordained minister. Oh, wow. And like he had his own church. He like preaches at a church and everything. Well, that's where you do preach. But and uh, he pulls up to the curb in front of the house I was staying at and he goes, if you don't mind, I'm gonna pray with you for a minute. I'm like, for I'm like, where? <laughs> <I'm like, laughs> reaches his hand back, holds my hand. He goes, Father God, and I'm like, oh, this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and he's like, you know, like just just the full prayer, like asking God to help me make some sales oh. and to get ahead and to meet people and the network and all that stuff and like for good things to happen, you know, prosperous. And I was like, oh, wow, that's so nice. That's so awesome of him. I'm like, nothing's going to happen. Next day, Upper Deck walks by, art director from Upper Deck, and then a couple other companies walk by. And they're like, hey, this is some good stuff. We could use you on a project. I'm like, oh, oh, (laughs) Father Miguel. (laughs) 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 For the win. But it's it's like you, you, you just, you never know where this roller coaster of your career is going to go. I mean, it can be, nothing can be happening one day, nothing. And you could just be contemplating applying to any random job. And then you only have to open that one email that says, are you available? Yeah, it's true. And then not mess up. I'm like, yes, I'm available and deliver. Yeah. That's awesome. You want some more? Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that was, I will take some more. I will take some more of that. 
but that's 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 been my my experience and it's just uh I don't know. Like I I'm always grateful for every experience that I have, every opportunity that I have as an as an illustrator whenever an art director gives me a shot because I always think about all the all the other people that have portfolios just as good if not better than mine and could say, yeah, I'm going to give that person a shot. Uh, you know, or anybody other than me. But when they do call, especially when you see, you know, art directors on on Twitter saying, hey, if you're interested in doing this for my company, post your link to your website, right, in my Twitter page or in this thread or whatever, in this post, like thousands of people from all over the world, you go, oh, man, and they're all good, most yeah. of them. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like, that's the competition. It's not just in the United States. It's like, mm-hmm. like Bulgaria. <laughs> it's like, it's like, you... Anyway, but it's, it's amazing. No, I mean, like putting yourself out there, there's a lot to be said for it though. Like the dedication that you need to have in order to put yourself in spaces and take risks to make yourself visible to people who you don't even know are there. Um, because like, I've always hated this quote, but it's kind of true where it's like, oh, it's always like right place, right time. Like you have to be in the right place at the right time. But it's, it's unbelievably true um, because really unexpected things have happened when I've gone into spaces that I was like really doubtful of, or I'm just like, oh, like I'm not gonna stand out from anybody. Uh, and that's when all the people will find you because you made yourself visible. You put yourself out there. So the fact that you did that effort, even though there are artists, like there's literally always going to be an artist who's more talented than you. There's also going to be a ton of people who are less talented than you or just haven't gotten there yet. And what matters is the fact that you were seen by somebody because you put the effort to get yourself out there in the first place. So, I mean, there's a lot to be said for it, even if like you're not feeling super confident about where you are at the time or whatever just like do it and you know let somebody else decide if you're good enough for them you know yeah like the the artist that I was sharing a booth with uh at San Diego the year before uh a dude in a luchador mask had walked by our table and had seen his stuff and bought up all of his prints all of his art books and was like blown away by his work and uh, the artist had no idea who that person was because, you know, because of the mask. And after the fact, found out that it was Guillermo del Toro. Nice. And ended up being contacted to work on a couple of feature films. That's amazing. Right? Like, you just, you never know <laughs> who's going to walk up to your booth. Yeah. Walk to your table and just be like, hey, wow. Or take your card, not even say a word, just take your card and walk off. Yeah right? But you've put yourself out there. Yeah. You literally never know what could happen. Yep. And I tell my students, it doesn't matter how good you are if people don't know you exist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But also, it does, like, you can try really hard with social media, like I did for years, just trying to get my, myself out there. And it's like, it took me like 10 years to get 10K followers when I, and I was like doing the things where like post every day. Obviously, I, I was making mistakes, like there were things I was doing wrong and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's like, it, it, sometimes it doesn't matter how much you try, you still might not be in front of the right people. And one shift or like one other person sharing your work could be the trick and you have no control over that. And so it's yeah. just like, I think the thing I've learned from all this is like, at the end of the day, if I don't believe in what I'm doing, then none of that stuff matters. Um, Because, and and it's like, and even just the lack of reception won't matter either because I care about what I'm doing, you know? So it's just like, it'll get you through the hard times, but it'll also uh, be the reason why people connect to your work in the first place, because you, they feel that connection that you have to your work. So to me, that's just been my compass through all of it, through the confusion of like, how do you navigate this? How do you get xyz there is no like hard and fast rules i think it's different for everybody but that's the one thing i think that connects a lot of people uh that that do make it you know is that they you can tell they believe in their work or that they connect with their work yeah but it's also i think the content that you produce i don't know if i'm using the the term right but it's got trending or somebody it's it's got to be there's there's the content that you produce there has to be a time for it where it's people care 
right? Or a large number of eyes are gravitating to it because it's a topic of conversation all of a sudden. Like the zeitgeist, and, like that kind of thing? I mean, I, I still keep coming back to all the different, and not just for me, but all of these different opportunities that have happened for people in publishing um, because of the success of Black Panther. I keep coming back to that. Mm -hmm. And before that, like there was before Black Panther and after Black Panther, where people, you were, if you were just, if you were putting out content that had Black faces in it, it was just fan art. It was something that was getting shared around, but nobody was buying it. It yeah. was just out there. And I'm curious to see if you could go back into your Instagram and see at what point yearly, things started to spike or attention started to gravitate where people started to go, who's this Mia? What's that about? What's she doing? Right. When did that start? To, when, like there's, there's, there's clear numbers. And that stuff's interesting, but at the same time, you can't do anything about that. Right. Like, right. You, you can't, can't. You, can't. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you just can't have to keep doing your thing. Exactly. You keep doing your thing and hope that whatever you're doing is going to catch fire. Eventually. But that's what I'm saying. That that belief in it has is like it's delusional almost. Like you have to be delusional enough to think like I love this and someday enough people will love it too, so I can do this, keep doing this or not. And it's like it's a gamble. It's like you you put everything into that and it might work and it might not. You know. Right. Or there's, there's people who publish books that like 20 years later got made into a film and was nothing when it came out. But it's it's that belief in doing it and getting it done because you want it. Yeah. Not and and. And that's a whole nother thing because it's like, you have to be willing to lose and be willing to fail. And a lot of people can't make that choice for yeah. me. Like, I could not have made that choice if it wasn't for my partner having a, a job at a video game company. Like that's point blank, you know? And, uh, and I remind myself of that every day. So it's just like, I, I want that to be different for people that I want there to be like a grant system in this country where people can take a chance on their ideas, you know? And like, uh, and, and just afford to, anyway, I'm going on a rant here because I get really passionate about this, but I just, I would want people who can't make it financially, but have a vision for something to be able to do it and make it through and make their payments, you know, and make that thing. Cause I feel like we're missing out on so many stories that people then can't afford to pursue, you know? Yeah. Even the things that do get funded, like a, a lot of projects just fail yeah. in the middle of it and end up just in a shelf forever and you never see the light of day and it just it's so disheartening to know how many things that like, just didn't get made so really um you know like even when you get to that point it's like being able to follow through is such a big thing like the fact that we have like things like as beautiful as arcane as mm -hmm. beautiful as like black panther or spider verse like it's it's insane like because like that whole process is so taxing and so much but um but they do shift the culture but with like the zeitgeist and chasing the culture and everything like it is something that is, is hard to detect and something that I feel like if you end up continuously chasing that and only that you're just not going to know who you are as an artist anymore like you're not just really you're really not going to be able to um stay true to yourself because you're only chasing something for the sake of getting an audience rather than what you actually want to create and like mind you there's a lot of artists who function this way like, you know, like you see, you see a lot of people just like making content that's just pure fan art or pure, you know, whatever, or they just go to the next trending thing and they do really well for it. Um, you know, so more power to them. But for me personally, that's just not the way I can live my life. Like, I just like, I have a revolt, like a repulsion against doing stuff that's just for the sake of trending for an audience. Like even the fan art that I did do, like, you know, it would be Legend of Zelda or Pokemon or things like that, that I'm already so excited about and I love. And also they're timeless. So it doesn't really hinge on a time period so much as just like, this is something that I like that I want to share with other people and hopefully they like it. And so it's worked so far, but um, I'm at least fortunate enough to have themes in my art that seem to resonate with people enough that they like my originals too. But it's just really about what works for each person. But I definitely don't want people to think that they have to chase the cultural zeitgeist in order to be successful, because I don't think that's necessarily true either. Yeah, definitely not. That, though you saw a lot of that when like zombies were in, like everyone was doing zombies and it's like, oh my God. <laughs> it's like after a while it's just so oversaturated that it doesn't mean anything anymore, you know? Or like in, in the art gallery world, when Mark Ryden was really big, everyone was painting stuff with big eyes and it's like, 
you don't want to be poor man so and so you know it's like oh, don't you want to do your own thing like uh, i don't know it's good to be influenced by people but at the point where it starts becoming like imitation it's just like i don't know i guess it's like like you said lauren it works for some people it just would be such a turn off for me uh, to, to do that with my own work so yeah i might have any big eye paintings in your like, <laughs> behind you back there <laughs> I did some in college. Remember, I, I talked. Yeah. Like, eyes are like, yeah. It wasn't Mark Ryden. It was like, a, like Disney films had big eyes too. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah it was, yeah, it was insane. <laughs> yeah. Like also as a consumer, like I don't want to buy somebody else's like version of, you know, a Mark Ryden. Like if I was into that kind of style, like I would want to get a Mark Ryden print or something like that instead from the source, you know, like. <laughs> Except he's so out of so many people's price range that I guess that that is maybe the the, the technique would, or, or whatever. That's, that's, that's when you go for the like lower tier. You go for the um the good and plenty. What is the, what's the target brand that you get? Or like oh yeah, the good and gather brand instead okay. of the actual brand made with the Hershey's chocolate. <laughs> Still tasty, but not quite what you were hoping for. What else? <laughs> What else are you all thinking about for this year? Because I like I think all these thoughts have been going on in my head too. So I'm glad we brought this stuff up. But like Esther, is there anything like right now that you're thinking about like for this coming year that you want to share that you've been stewing on? Oh man, I don't even I'm hitting that point where Eric was talking about earlier about like like what I do from here. Like not to not to sound like super like conceited in in a sense. Like, I'm not saying that I've like hit like a pinnacle or like a peak, but it's more like kind of want to go back and learn again, mm. you know, like, so it's just a desire for that. I, I feel that there are like some artists that like once they are set, they're, you know, they feel com comfortable and confident and whatnot. But I think like for me, like, I'm just like, what more is there to learn? I'd like to learn more. I can't like. I, I feel like it's also, you know, like when you keep dedicating, you hear this, like, definitely as an art student, like always like, yeah, you relearn your fundamentals. I'm like, I've relearned that fundamentals like nine years in a row. Like, <laughs> am I learning it again for the 10th year in a row? Like, is that, and then 11th, like, how do I <laughs> elevate my fundamentals? Like that's, that's 2022 thoughts right now. Like awesome. we're, where, where are those fundamental, like, the, if, if I'm learning, if I'm relearning, like, fucking values for, like, the 10th time, like, what else? <laughs> what else? <laughs> well, I think because we, we started recording after I had actually said that. So for people oh. watching this, um, I was just talking about how, as a concept artist or illustrator, you can land that dream job. Marvel Studios, Lucasfilm whatever riot games whatever that job might be but feel so insecure about your position that it starts to affect your art and your ability to do the job but i've i've talked to artists that get to that mountaintop and then like that was the dream job that was the goal to always get to that point but then when they get there they don't know what, what they don't know what to do they don't they, what else like what do i do now what else is there right i've i've reached it i've i've achieved the goal like if that was the bucket list achieved then what do you do right some people just stay where they are they plateau and they just can make consistently good work for the rest of their life or they move up to being a creative director or whatever it might be um and other people burn out they just, they realize, oh my God, I probably shouldn't be where I am. Or their mind tells them, you don't deserve where you're at because of X, Y, Z reasons. And they start believing it. And then it affects their art, which in turn affects their ability to do the job. And then they lose that job. Yeah. So for, for somebody like Esther, for somebody like me, for, for all of you uh, to come into each year and say, okay, well, if I'm where I wanted to be last year, what, what can I do so that I don't feel like I've just plateaued and I'm just, just going to just be stuck? Um, <laughs> you're like, I don't want to learn fundamentals. 
<laughs> and I'm thinking like Esther, or like what's your ZBrush Blender Moto blah 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 3D program skills like? I, I use blend. I use Blender. Yeah. <laughs> I use Blender. I use Nomad. I picked up Procreate. <laughs> <laughs> picked up, picked up whatever ZBrush core. Started okay. opening up Marvelous Designer. <laughs> oh wow! All right. She, wow, really she brought nice. Marvelous Designer into it. Yeah. <laughs> But that, that's what I mean, where it's just like, you know, like I have like spoilers for everyone who's trying to break in and then realize there's like, there's the foot through the door, but like, it's like an endless, it's a purgatory foot through the door. <laughs> spoilers, everyone. There, there will always be a new app that you have to learn in order to maintain <laughs> yeah. your position. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to keep yourself up and up on the new stuff, the new technology. Yeah. Like I just mastered Maya. Why well, gotta? Why well, gotta learn gotta Blender? Learn another thing. Damn it! Like, <laughs> what is Unreal Engine? Ah, like yeah, that's yep. about to be me soon. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh my god. Yep. I think I think it also just shows that like as especially especially with the pandemic and everyone working at home, uh, you kind of I think that was a good year year and a half of reflection, especially if you were working of like that's a lot of information just yeah. out there, and like you have jobs that expect you to learn like all of it <laughs> or like half of it, and it's like huh, is that really, you know, there's a lot of just, you know, self-reflection too of like, uh, is that really necessary? Is that necessary for me? And then you realize you just want to retire in the middle of nowhere <laughs> in a cabin and just like, I can, I can live off lettuce for the rest of my life. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I'm definitely out here like you guys are learning like <laughs> oh no do you have any brain capacity to do that unbelievable <laughs> well I mean because for for me and Esther you know we're both teaching so yeah. it's kind of like you have to stay on top of stuff yeah. because I don't want to be that dinosaur <laughs> Oh, referring yeah, to the golden days the old days back when you know we used to sling real paint Oh my you God. don't need to know that Photoshop procreate oh nonsense. You just got to know the fundamentals and know how to paint. No. That was my scat experience in a nutshell. Yeah. Well, bless for not falling into that. And no, like in the game industry, you also have to learn and like continuously be up on the technology too. Like I say that, but I, I do have to constantly learn in my role too. And I'm definitely going to be learning a lot um, as I'm like going into a new studio and like a new, like, you know, well, not a new game engine because I worked in Unreal before, but like, working it in it more in depth to the point where I like really need to understand like what's going on at least a little bit um and I'm never going to be like a tech artist or anything like that that like knows the ins and outs and knows how to write tools and everything that's not my job anyway but I do want to know enough to make informed decisions for my team about what needs to be done so um I'm sure it's going to be like a curve of of understanding this new program and I'm just like oh my god this is going to be a lot but <laughs> But it's just like it's hard to retain information now when like you know the pandemic has knocked all your sense out of you but um it's possible <laughs> it's possible it just takes a little bit more effort i think yeah. but i am also that, looking forward to learning new things from my toolbox it also yeah. makes me feel feel like uh like i think it's this year where i realize that like we're slowly becoming boomers like we're just we're, we, we're crossing that threshold we'll never we will never ask <laughs> and, I'm just, us. and i'm just like you know like at some point like you know at some point there will be a, a sense of out of touchness right yeah. with like especially new new artists or people breaking in who are younger or whatnot and it's and it's like man what what is relevance these days <laughs> oh no we can't, we can't go there we can't yeah. go there yeah yeah that's a different that's a that's too early that's too early <laughs> that. that for it's december relevance. 2022 oh, i already feel that way so <laughs> i mean i feel that way too i'm already like not up on tiktok trends and stuff and i'm like i'm falling behind uh-oh it's happening yeah it's becoming 
I'm becoming that adult who doesn't know all the jokes that my niece and nephews are slinging around when I come home. <laughs> They're doing dances I've never seen before. I'm like, uh-oh, what's okay. happening? I mean, I'm, I, I kind of got out of the learning new dance moves after trying to do that leg over flipping thing that kid and play used to do, you know? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? The fact about? that you brought up kid in play says everything. Everything. You know? <laughs> like I couldn't do that. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose teeth if I try that. So like, no. Nope. I can do. I, I think I know how to do the orange justice, like a little bit. That's really all. I don't even know what that <laughs> is. That was already like that was already like six years ago. Like I'm already too late. <laughs> like, look, I got bring it, it back, down. Lord. It bring down. it back. Anyway, I made it. It's like we've moved on so far from this. Oh God. Oh, on, on the learning uh thing oh, oh sorry did somebody say something I, I just looked at okay no I was just gonna bring up that I I've always tried to like I feel like I've overstudied a lot in the last several years or it's almost like my comfort zone thing like whenever I'm stuck or whenever I feel like I can't perform I'm like let me let me do my scales you know that's what it feels like or let me shoot my hoops or something and you know filling sketchbooks and doing studies all that kind of stuff but now I'm at a, at a point where this year I, I do not literally do not have time for that. And it's kind of like gun to your head. What do you know without studying anymore, without learning anymore? And that is so scary because, oh, uh, and the thing is I, I've had, I've actually realized that it's like, even with that, I will learn anyway. I will learn with every painting. I know I will push myself with each one. And so I have to like look at each piece as it has to be a finished piece, but that will be like, you know, my studies to finish that will be how I learn, you know? Um, but again, I, I think there's something that my therapist has been trying to drill into my head that's finally kicking in where um, she was basically saying, you've trained your whole career for this moment and you are prepared for this moment. Uh, that's why this moment has fallen in your lap, you know, and it's like, uh, and, and I don't know how much of that I believe, but I have to believe it because if you don't, it's that performance thing that you were talking about earlier, Eric, it's like you get to that point and you can't perform or you can't deliver. That's a problem, you know, and it is a head game or a mind game in a lot of ways. And so um yeah I think for me the biggest thing is is not to focus on skills not to focus on whether I have it or not whether it's going to be perfect or not it's whether I can deliver whether I can perform under pressure uh, it's not an artistic thing for you you are stuck in your own head and we have it on video <laughs> like, <laughs> all the time Mia like, all the time all the time how I, many times I, you forget that I own one of your original paintings I can I can walk up to it and be like she knows what she's doing she's got chops she but that's the big lies like that I don't know what I'm doing no, I'm no, so, no 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 the no, lie you just no, no, no. the lie was what you just said there you go that's your own that's your own negative self-talk that's your own yeah. self-doubt going well what if no but yeah. I can't do no no you have the skills and for a lot of people, it's a time management thing. Yeah. Right. Now you could have all the skill in the world, but if you can't force yourself to just sit down and do it, just do it. Yeah. What is that? What is that actor that just goes, just do it? What's that guy? <laughs> that like, yeah. Thank you, but <laughs> I was like, damn it, that guy's genius. <laughs> That's the clip for the episode right there. Shia LaBeouf is a genius. Just do it. Oh, can't go on the record saying that <laughs> but you know for how much we teach uh students like or we've learned in school like skills like actual technical skills and stuff i think i wish they taught the mind game more because i think artists really need that at least i really need that let me just speak for myself because i i've <laughs> been a worry wart my whole life i remember one of my favorite teachers in art school was telling me you worry too much and i was like all the way back then he was saying that and nothing has changed and it's like, I don't have to change that. I just have to know how to adapt to that being my, the state of my brain, you know? Um, but, but I feel like that is something that you need for longevity in a career is figuring out how to navigate the mind stuff just as much as it is learning all these new tools and these new techniques and stuff, at least for me. And I've said it in, in I think in previous episodes, when you get to a point in your career when companies are coming to you and asking you to do a thing and you do it enough times and that starts happening enough times you will lose that self-doubt yeah I guess because it's a, a part of your brain will just say I can do it because they came to me for a reason yeah they didn't just go eeny meeny miny mo I, I guess you know 
this guy isn't available, so we'll ask Eric. Oh, whatever. No, they saw something and they said, yep, that's who we want. Yeah. And then it's the, t- the time management thing. The is your personal life straight where you can mentally just say, I'm going to sit here and fo- be able to focus yeah. and do it and not talk myself out of it, not have worrying about whatever, just be able to confidently just switch into autopilot and just paint. And you can do that. Put on some movie soundtrack, whatever it is you got to do to like focus your brain so that you quiet that. <laughs> Lauren, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> You, I feel like you're being called out or something. Like that's your body language right now. <laughs> like all the, like, the best, the best pep talk. Yeah, it's like whispering in your ear, just like do. I like our art therapist here. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, ADHD coupled with burnout. Yeah. Yeah. A really good combination, I gotta say. Um, but it's something that I've been trying to get myself back to, to be able to just like sit and focus on the thing and not procrastinate until the last minute to get something done. Cause that's the only way that I can get the dopamine to do it. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to, to break myself out of that bad habit um, so that I don't have to panic. Um, not have to make my clients panic really too. Um, but like this, the pandemic has definitely exacerbated it and it's made it a lot harder to be able to sit and do that. But it really does go miles if you can actually muster the ability to sit and accomplish a thing and look at it. But, um, but like, I think for people, for people like me who have like to battle with this, the lack of focus the you know, like we have to find techniques to get ourselves to that point where we can sit down and do it and make it work for us. And I like what that looks like is, is different for everybody, yeah. but, um, it is really important because if we can't master it, if we can't master ourselves, then we're not going to do anything. And that's just out of the question. If you're trying to survive and trying to make a career out of this stuff, like you just have to find a way to do it, whether it's medication, whether it's therapy, whether it's behavioral changes, whether it's like Pomodoro timers, like, what does that look like for everybody? It's like, really like what, you know, you got to You got to find that to master it for yourself. What does that look like for you, Lauren, if you're willing to share? For me, um, I have started, like, I think one of my resolutions, if, if you want to call it that for this year, has been to really understand where I am at mentally day per day and feel out instead of just saying, like, here's the definite day where I'm working or not going to work. I feel differently every day. So yeah, I used to do, like, I, I don't do anything Mondays and Fridays. I do like that. But sometimes on a Friday, I kind of want to just like pull out a banger. And like, sometimes on a Thursday, I just can't do a brain that day and nothing's going to happen. I'll stare at a screen. And so I'm like, okay, like maybe instead of saying these definite days for myself, what I want to do instead is when I'm feeling it, just don't deny that feeling and just do it while I'm feeling it because that'll net me the best results when I'm having a good brain day. Um, and so I'm going to try that and see if it works better. Um, this is a new realization, so I haven't gotten to try it yet. I will update you on how it works. But I got to say, I was definitely trying to do freelance today, and this is a very bad brain day, so it's not happening. But um, tomorrow would be a better day. Now, if I wait for, like, the best brain day, like, it's probably not going to happen. But if I at least have energy, that's when I want to try to do what I can do to get on, get on top of my stuff. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. You know? So we'll see. But in terms of the learning aspects, like that's definitely something that um, I also want to get on top of because going back to the fundamentals is like, I read this in an article, I think it was on Mighty Colors that like the defining hallmark of all masters of art was the fact that they never stopped doing their fundamentals. They always, always, always practice their fundamentals no matter what. And so I definitely want to be in that kind of boat where like, I'm not going to ever be like a master and that's fine by me. Um, but I do at least want to be, you know, like the, the whole thing that you said me, a gun to my head. Like, I want to be able to like, know that I can like rattle off. I know, you know, how to like put together a, a bang in color. I know my anatomy. I know like how to draw like hands. I know a good composition. I know my values. And all. Like, I just want to be able to have that reference library. So 
instinctually available that it's like not even a question. Um, and now that I'm going to a job that has a four day work week that gives me an extra day a week, which I'm super excited about, uh, I wanna use that day, at least in the beginning to be like that day where I get to connect with myself as an artist. Cause I have not had that in a very long time. Have you ever frolicked? <laughs> I did. I do frolic. Yes. I mean, like, it, it, <laughs> like, I don't think I've ever frolicked. You haven't frolicked? Eric. <laughs> Some once. kind of frolic. You have not an amazing once. garden. <laughs> like, like, how do you, how, what do you just throw yourself down a hill? Like, what the yeah, hell? Like, that's not frolicking. That's rolling. That's yeah. what, so, so there you go. So like. It's kind of like skip dancing, right? Yeah, I imagine frolicking is like a fun, like satyr, like skip. <laughs> like a I gotta look up the definition of frolic now. Let's see, let's see how close we are to the correct definition of a frolic. Oh my god! I don't think it's a verb. I don't think it's a specific verb. Is it not? Really? I think it's just like being like, de- like jumping happily or some shit. It says to, to make romp, it. to play, behave playfully and yeah. uninhibitedly. Yeah. There's a verb version of frolic and a noun version of frolic and then an adjective. Yeah. You live a frolic life, which is crazy to me. So technically dancing is frolicking, right? Because you're yeah. out energetically. You yeah. have frolicked, Eric. You... I have frolicked. If, if dancing technically is frolicking, then yes. <laughs> it's moving it's like frolicking is like a state of being i think too where it's like you're like letting you're like you're doing a thing with joyful uh intention and like letting go i feel like that's what kind of defines a frolic more so than just dancing for the sake of right okay well then i guess i have then i guess i frolicked yesterday yeah yeah that's wonderful yeah Yeah. i tossed myself down a hill on a (laughs) (laughs) i I was like i don't think frolic is to fling yourself down a hill (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> dangerously yeah. but I yeah and then i broke an arm that shouldn't happen do more of that this year that's that's do more frolic do yeah. more frolicking and learn blender <laughs> frolic while learning blender frolic <laughs> while learning blender that's like frolic, no frolicly learn blender there you go frolicly learn blender yeah just that's a word get that's up and word. dance while it's rendering stuff i don't oh. know <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah, like, frolically is a word. Haha. Yeah. And a frolicsome manner with gaiety and mirth. Frolically Murph. long wonder. Random like ass very... words. Like, yeah, I was no say... <laughs> I've never used the word mirth in a sentence. It feels very like 19th century. Like, <laughs> it's awesome. Gaiety. Like, gaiety is just incredible. Love that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I think that's like, that's something that I, I want to reconnect with though. Um, like I have moments where I frolic with my friends or like just with, by myself. I always dance. I always have music when I'm in the shower. I'm always like, my cats stare at me like I'm crazy. But um, <laughs> to embody that is like my general state of being. Cause like, I'm like, it's like the beginning of the year. I'm already depressed. Well, so we're starting off in a really good spot. Um, I would like to like, you know, not be <laughs> and like be cool for once. <laughs> I don't know how to get there, but I think it's like a, a lot of it might be a mindset shift. Um, I think another part of it might just be like, get me out of this house, please. Mm-hmm. So. I think that's you know entirely what, uh, what, what, okay. So my, my wife bought me these um, Samsung earbuds, these, these earbud things. Are they AirPods, guys, but for Android? AirPods, the AirPods, but for Android, <laughs> because you know, Apple's like, whatever, but uh <laughs> I got so excited about these. I was like, wait, I can put a movie soundtrack on and just put one of these in my ear and just have like a constant movie soundtrack for my entire day. I like that, that, that way. If I'm sad, I could play some random ass movie and just like, it just, it just excited me. Like I could have a soundtrack to my life from That's now awesome. on. and i just started like in the kitchen like walking in slow motion because like if you're in an action film that's what you do when you're emptying the dishwasher (laughs) i don't know that's it just got me really excited all of a sudden and i just wanted to share that with the world i got earbuds earbuds (laughs) airpods whatever you call these things i like that idea though like embodying joy in day-to-day activities yeah Hell yeah. 
like put joy in your studies while you're learning your foundations again like put joy while you're learning blender you know put put joy while you're doing your job and like you know trying to get through the day just like try to maybe there's something fun in everything that we just haven't found yet yeah I think that's a great idea Esther is smiling I just think of that meme of Miyazaki just saying anime was a mistake (laughs) that's that's just that's the only thing that comes to mind Wait, what? Of all things. <laughs> <laughs> Explain. Yeah, I don't think I've seen this. I have, but I, I know I love this meme. I think it's very funny. It's also not actually a quote he said, but yeah, I it's not. So much. Yeah. But please explain why you made that association of of all associations with. Oh uh, no, no, it's because I'm 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 a nihilist. It's just, Are you being like, crotchety right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically. <laughs> I, I, but I think that that goes to like, like, in, in tune with what we've been we've been like talking about. Where it's just like I, right now, like the the in, initial and immediate like mm, this like like mm, not sure about that one. But I think that's just you know as artists you have to like learn to get either approach that in a more like humorous manner. Like, this is just, like, this is just my sarcastic asshole in, like, persona being a sarcastic asshole um, and not let that get in the way of frolicking (laughs) and enjoying art. I think, I think my favorite method of nihilism is to frolic in spite of the inevitable end. I love that. Is that nihilism, though? (laughs) We're all gonna die. Might as well do whatever I want. <laughs> is that nihilism or is that another philosophy of life? It's optimistic nihilism. There you go. <laughs> Esther's like not even then. <laughs> is the whole fundament of nihilism to be sarcastic and dark about all of it, or is it to acknowledge that yeah, there's there's no point to anything. Might as well make do with it what we will. Like, why can't that be a part of nihilism? Is to be like, because everything has no meaning, why does all my actions have so much meaning that I'm not going to do them because I'm too embarrassed to do them or that I don't want to do them? I love that, that, that gets, that, that's, that's like the existentialists who started approaching it because existentialists are the ones who's, who, whose philosophy is about finding meaning and approaching meaning and meaning in life nihilism is the complete rejection of it all (laughs) yeah for sure but it's like if there's no meaning then like why like why not do anything you want to yeah or or just cease (laughs) but that's so that's such a bummer though i guess it's nihilism right (laughs) you're letting the you're letting the inevitability win (laughs) and don't listen to me this should be cut never just don't just like edit that it's a counterpoint it's valid (laughs) don't let it win (laughs) but what about like your your cabin with the lettuce and stuff oh yeah i mean (laughs) (laughs) that will officially just be the thing the cabin with lettuce (laughs) think about potatoes but lettuce (laughs) not even something hearty and sustaining but lettuce It's yeah, it's not that sustainable. Good cheese, like give me meat, like give me something. <laughs> Crackers, um, even like. I know. I I the way I look at it is like there are so many forces around you, whatever you believe them to be, that are trying to get you to give up, you know, and to not yeah. create as an artist. And it's the best, you know, middle finger you can give it to not give up, you know, yeah. and just. And obviously you have to want to, because if you don't want to, that, that's, you know, a completely different conversation. But I'm saying if you want to create things, that's something I've actually had to turn around in my head is like anything you do to sort of like prevent yourself from creating, you're just helping it along, you know, you're helping all these forces along that are trying to get you to give up. Um, and so at least when, uh, when I get really discouraged, I try to think about that. Um, because at the end of the day, I do want to make things and mm-hmm. um, that makes me happier, but um but yeah, it's definitely uh, the the start of this year. Like you were saying earlier too, Lauren, that it's like I I don't like I think all of us like none of us got enough rest for the two years that we've had. 
<laughs> and it's just like it feels like such a slog to begin another year and you're just like I'm not ready <laughs> but we do what we can I want to take like a whole year off like I'm so like I just want to just not do anything for a whole year in order to I feel like this burnout needs a lot more than the two week vacation yeah to alleviate it but yeah like I just feel like we need such a recharge and we're just not getting it because we have to continue to work we have to continue to make money we have to continue like so how do we like I don't even know how to cope anymore <laughs> I really really don't and like when I used to go home and spend time with my family I used to have like a like a good month of like this energy like there was like this wave that I would ride up until February where I'm just like man like I'm so ready to tackle this year I'm ready to create I have all these big plans and you know they don't get met because you're crazy and it's the beginning of the year but like now that that wave lasts essentially, I think a weekend and then it's gone. <laughs> like that's like, it's burned it so like, it's so short now. Yeah. yeah. And I don't even know, I can't even give advice. I'm just like, I'm just, I'm just putting this out there in the world that like, that's just what we have right now to work with. Yeah. So like maybe frolicking through it is just like, at least like, even if we don't, it's like fake it till you make it. At least if you don't feel it, like maybe if you embody some of it, You'll get some joy in your heart. You just got to frolic every weekend. Just set a time to frolic. <laughs> frolic yeah. in spite of the nihilism. That's like your reset button. <laughs> yeah. Like those dumb things that I do around the house every day. Like I have like this little portable speaker that I put like outside of my shower. Um, I always like do a twirl when I open my front door to check the mail. Oh, um, so cute. <laughs> I can <really> picture that. <laughs> I sing songs to my cats all the time. Like I sound like a crazy cat lady and I'm probably, you know, <laughs> I, I am, it's fine. This is what happens. It's a pandemic, leave me alone. But like, just like little moments of joy um, is what I need to bring, I think, to my work and my art. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think about it as like, what's one self-care thing I can do for myself this year? Like, what's one thing I can commit to? <laughs> or like a self-indulgent thing. And for some people it might be like, what's one thing you can do every month? But um, I think like, I wanna stop feeling guilty for taking nights off or getting sleep, you know? It's like, that's the least I can do. But, um, but, but to me, it's like, if I can just find a way to not feel guilty when I'm not working, that's a step in the right direction, you know? Um, but uh, we talk about self-care a lot on this podcast, but it's like, the reality is sometimes when you are super burnt out or you are super broke, or, or xyz it doesn't feel like you can you know take care of yourself and it feel you feel selfish for taking care of yourself or you feel like i don't have time but um i i we binge watched my partner and i binge watched the whole new season of queer queer eye this yes. week. I'm and watching it was, yeah it's so good and, and it was such a reminder i mean i was a freaking wreck but like seeing some of these women that were just like giving everything of themselves and they were so burnt out they literally filled every minute of their day with work and it's, they still didn't feel like they were giving enough or working yeah. hard enough. And that just was, it was almost like proof to me that it's like, it doesn't matter how hard you work, it will never be enough. And actually like what kind of like the takeaway too, is like, if you do take just a moment to care for yourself, you suddenly have more energy to keep giving, which is sort of the antithesis of what they thought, which is like, I don't have time to think about me because that's selfish, but that's the best thing you can do if you do want to help people or you do want to have more energy for your own work. Um, so anyway, even if it's just like one small thing you can do, um, even if it's just like me getting eight hours of sleep is the, is the gift I give myself so I can continue working or so I can continue on. Whatever that is for you, I just like, that's at least something I'm trying to commit to this year is just to think of it as not selfish, but necessary, you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah, something I'm so trying the to- So the year of self-care. So like- if you're home watching this or listening to this, like finding something that you can do per month, per week, yeah. just for yourself, whether you are single or have a house of four kids, you know, if it's just reading a comic book, playing a video game, yeah. frolicking outdoors, <laughs> feeding chipmunks, whatever, whatever it might be that you want, throw yourself down a hill, see, see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> but like, like just anything that you can do for yourself that makes you feel good yeah. because I don't, I don't think anybody is on their deathbed going, you know, I wish I had worked harder and neglected my family more. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> the zero out of zero people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you just didn't like your family. Like, yeah, then, yeah. Goodness. <laughs> goodness, I worked so hard. Right. But no, that never, that doesn't happen. So um, I think I'm going to take that advice because I was, you know, I was talking to you guys before the recording, before talking about stuff that I had planned on doing or was thinking about doing. But then I think about it, you know, I got a PlayStation that I've been neglecting for a long time. I'd be mean, downloading, they, they have holiday sales on PlayStation. I'm like, they you always this game half off. I'm like, half off. <laughs> I start downloading stuff that I never play. I'm like, oh God. Got to get through your library. Got to start getting through that catalog. And also consuming content makes you more well-rounded as an artist. It's very important. This is true. I, 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 uh, I'm, I'm having some of my students paint uh, screen captures from Tron Legacy uh, yeah. this Friday. And I had some of them go, what's Tron Legacy? And I wanted to be like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like a batman and robin comic <laughs> like no <laughs> like, like you can leave <laughs> get out <laughs> what did you say just get out get out, <laughs> just get out. <laughs> but yeah oh, no. like oh man like i have never seen it like you want to be a concept artist you've never seen tron legacy like what i don't like, like esther do you have this problem with your students hey man i'm you're talking to the wrong person. You're talking to the person where people were like, you haven't watched I'm like, no. <laughs> and, and then do not watch it out of spite. No, I just don't watch it. <laughs> now I really won't watch it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Like, like. I, 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 I'm trying to think of like a, um, a movie that was at th- for sure Breakfast at Tiffany. That is one that like people are like, you need to watch that. I'm like, no, I don't. I haven't. <laughs> no, you don't. Uh, I've never even seen it. That's, that's good. <laughs> what is it? Princess Diary? Princess Diaries. Princess. Yeah, Diaries. Princess, with Princess Bride. Bride. Princess, oh, Princess, Princess Bride. Bride. One of them. Princess Diary Bride. and Princess Bride. Princess Diaries is another movie. Princess yeah. Bride is, 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 yeah. Yeah. You need to watch it. Nope. No, I'm good. Um, yeah. But I if think... they had said Robocop, if you ain't seen Robocop, Robocop 2. I saw it when I was a kid. Oh, you're right. That. That, Come on. I feel like Come if, on, Esther. If, if I was like 20 now and somebody told me to watch Robocop, <laughs> I would just, I would not out of spite. But I was 20 like a decade ago and was super into whatever, like the 80s shit. But like, I, I think that like there were seven, like, oh, James Bond. I have not watched anything previous to like, I have not watched any of the Sean Connery stuff. You know, and people were like, "You gotta watch that." I'm like, "No, I don't." Nah, you're good. <laughs> yeah, you're good. <laughs> you know he exists. I think that's really. Yeah. What it is. I mean, James Bond isn't bad, but just like there's like much better classics that you could see. But it's just like if if you want to have a career in an in entertainment industry, making sci-fi fantasy art, and don't know, like. Award-winning classic films in the in the in the genre, it's like, did did you lose a bet? Like like <laughs> who who made you want to be a concept artist? Like why do you want to do this? You don't even you ain't never seen Tron Legacy. Even if you hated it, you had to have seen no somebody. You walked in the room and saw <laughs> it was on. <laughs> you tell me you never. Come on now, <laughs> just like I. I like I will be in mid conversation, like teaching students, and it's like, wait, 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 what? And, like, class is paused. We have to go YouTube, and I have to show movie trailers. I'm like, oh my god, you are studying to be this. You want to go work for a game? This is gonna come up in conversation in a meeting, and somebody's gonna be like, wait, you have never seen RoboCop two? <laughs> like. You don't know who Ed 209 is? We with the, like the whole design of this robot in this video game is all based around us copying Ed 209. That's, you don't know what we're talking about? That's actually, you know, that's my point too, where it's just like they're gonna reference okay. I I reached this problem like <laughs> like recently, which is like people thinking stuff in the from the 80s was cool. Where it's just like, no, I'm not putting that in the <laughs> I'm not putting that in this concept because it's not. It's been 40 years. 40. Yikes. 
That's why it's coming back. It's the 40 year cycle. <laughs> that's, that's deeply upsetting for us off in the 80s or 40 years ago. Don't yeah, no. at all. Oh. What do you want to leave behind in 20, from 2021? Ooh, like what habits to break and stuff? Yeah. Like what do you not want to take with you into 2022? Oh, I would say, I would say definitely um, uh, a, year, a year's worth of of too many questions and not enough doing, <laughs> you know, just like the, it's not so much like self-doubt per se, but it's more like why double question or uh, just like ask too many things, overthinking even. You know, so I think it's reducing more of that habit, which I'm not like, which is like, I feel like many people like who I've talked with too, just ended up creating that mental loop, which, um, you know, I, I don't even, I wonder what causes it with many people, but I feel that one definitely working from home and being mostly isolated, um, you know, and all you get is like feedback. That's my guess, you know, so I want to reduce more of that and just like just 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 put it out just do it <laughs> you know it doesn't hurt otherwise um but that would be for me for like you know what to not bring into 2022 um, what about you eric i think that for me this year is going to be about understanding that the art that I admire, the art that I like, is not necessarily the art that I need to be creating okay. or chasing after. And that's both liberating to understand that, but also scary or a little frustrating because there was a part of my life where I knew two things. I wanted to do a certain type of art and nothing was going to stop me from doing it. And, you know, and that was, that was, I don't know what the second thing was, but you know, it was just, I want, <laughs> I, I just wanted to be a certain type of artist. And then I realized, no, I just like looking at that stuff. Mm -hmm. And yes, I could do it, but do I have to? So like, I have those questions rolling around in my head all the time now. So to say no is scary. And we've talked about that in the past, like yeah. that, that art of saying no, saying no is scary. Yeah. Because if you say no enough times, then you feel like a door is gonna close. And then you can't turn around and change your mind and go, wait, wait, but actually, wait, well, hold on a second. Don't, you know, it's done, it's closed. You've said no. So, I don't know. <laughs> just, just that idea that um, you have to know who you are and what you enjoy. And I think for myself, for this year, it's going to be about that self-care <clears throat> and, and realizing that if it's not something that brings me joy, if it's not something I absolutely need to paint, then I have to say, no. Yes. Yeah. So I like anyone. That's awesome. What about you, Mia? Mine's a kind of weird one, but it's like I, I wanna I wanna let go of my the my sense of shame around not <laughs> making a certain amount of money or not being self, you know, financially independent. I think I've carried that for a really, really long time and I realize that it's not serving me, it's actually holding me back. And part of it is just acceptance that what I've chosen is not a lucrative path. It's just not, you know? And so it's just like kind of stressing about that doesn't actually make it easier. It makes it harder. And so the best thing I can do is like, is just focus on this opportunity, get this book done, and then decide after that what I'm going to do, what steps I'm going to take. But for me, I guess it's like the past two years was sort of mourning, like the end of my income stream that I worked really hard to, you know, the, the source of income that was basically making my art possible. Yeah. Uh, is over, you know? And it's like, I think I was just really depressed because I put a lot into that. And uh, 
I, I was kind of in denial that it was, you know, that it's gone and that I have to come up with something new. But I guess like, uh, like just really lean into my my boyfriend's support and because I am really grateful that I have it and just do what I can right now. And then just, I guess, trust, which is a scary thing for me to say, because I'm very practical. I like to plan things, you know, but just trust that it'll work out somehow. Um, and, and then just try to share all my experiences that I can as honestly as I can with other people so that they can avoid the mistakes I've made and hopefully have uh, an easier path doing this kind of thing if they want to do that. But um, but yeah, for me, it's just like it just doesn't serve me to stress about that. And I, it's not going to change my circumstances to fixate on that so much. Um, so yeah, that'll definitely help for sure. And then the performance piece that I mentioned earlier that it's like, anytime it comes up and it's like imposter syndrome or you can't or you're, you're not enough this is this just push it aside and like whatever I still got to get it done though you know <laughs> so um yeah yeah for me I definitely want to um you know definitely want to leave behind my negative self-talk as well now that I know where a lot of it was coming from and the fact that like it's something that I couldn't help um as a person like you know like m- with my ADHD Um, I can really start to dismantle that and start to get better habits towards like being kinder to myself and being good to myself. And a part of that is just really making time for myself to do the art that I really want to do instead of letting an invisible barrier like, oh, well, like I have all these other obligations, so I can't possibly do this right now. um, Hold me back because that's just a way of keeping me from doing the thing that would make me happy and probably make me be more productive and creative. Um, but if I had a freelance project, I would always feel guilty about doing my own personal art instead of that freelance project. So um, I want to be better about that and make time for myself to actually focus on the things that I want to make. So I want to make a coloring book this year. I really want to do that. Uh, and so like, I would like to accomplish that. And in order to accomplish that, I have to leave a lot of that old stuff behind. So yeah, I want to do things properly this time and do things with uh, wait, frolically? <laughs> frolically. That's that's going to be that's going to be the the painted and color podcast like model like everything comma frolically. Do it with frolically. <laughs> do it with frolic, do it frolically. Do it with yeah. mirth and gaiety. <laughs> <laughs> with gusto. I like gusto. gusto. <laughs> now we're getting into that moxie like this. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I love it. Yeah. So, um, you know, like if you're watching, um, let us know in the comments or the chat what you want to leave behind um, from 2021 that you don't want to revisit anymore and what you want to bring forward into 2022. And let's working on making this one a better year uh, than last year and handle it frolically. (laughs) (laughs) We'll talk to you next time. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. (laughs) 